The Father was asked by Jesus to send His Spirit, that His Spirit would come and empower us. The, the Bible calls this the Spirit of, the spirit of Truth or the, the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of Holiness. God refers to this promise as, as the Holy Spirit as a promise that He would come to us and through His uh, sending, this promise would come and empower us, strengthen us, teach us, guide us, lead us. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Is he's, here, is he's here to be a, a person in our lives that brings fuel to us. You know, my wife brings fuel to me when she encourages me. My, my staff brings fuel to me when they encourage me. My, my, the people around me that God has blessed me to have around me, they, they, they bring fuel to me. They encourage me. They strengthen me. There's so many different aspects in how the Holy Spirit can bring fuel to you. This vehicle right now, we're putting fuel in this vehicle so that we can so that we can move, so that we can drive, we can have momentum, we can have some force behind us. And that's what the Holy Spirit is doing. He wants to get us moving. He wants to get us going. And so we have some force behind us. That's the will of God. That's the plan of God. And so if, I, if this car didn't have fuel, what would happen? It would, it would bog down. It would be on the side of the road. Doesn't matter how strong the engine is. Doesn't matter how tough the tires are. Doesn't matter what kind of car it is. It, it's, it's powerless because there is no fuel. The Holy Spirit has come, sent by the Father as the promise that we should have fuel in our lives, that he, he would empower us to be better husbands, empower us to be better business people, empower us to be better fathers. Whatever we need power to do, the Holy Spirit is here to empower us to do that. He wants to teach us, and part of that, in, that teaching is how to be a powerful person, how to be a powerful Christian. A powerful Christian is someone that not, not only knows how to do signs and wonders and miracles, but a powerful Christian is someone that knows how to live generously, that knows how to give of themselves to help other people, that knows how to, to give in the marriage and, and not only take. That's what the Holy Spirit is here to empower us to do, to help us. I want to encourage you today, live according to the power of the Holy Spirit, and that, the, the, the fuel of the Holy Spirit. Let Him encourage you when you're depressed or discouraged. Let him build you up when you feel like you don't have the confidence to go for it. He's here. He's a person. He's not an it. He's not separated. He has a name. His name is the spirit of holiness. And we want to encourage you to live according to that revelation and understanding of the spirit of holiness. Live according to God. Live a separated life. That's what holy means. Separated unto God for a purpose, for a plan, for his destiny. Do that and God will be on your side because he has sent you the promise that you will never be powerless, but that you always have power. Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And it goes on and says, and, and, and you are witnesses of these things. This, th he's talking to them as witnesses of the resurrecting power, witnesses of Jesus dying, witnesses of the fact that he died on the cross. The, this is what he's talking about. You're, you're witnesses of these things. And he says, verse 49, behold, I send the promise. There's a promise. Again, this is what we're talking about, the promise. Now, if you notice, in, in my Bible, it, it's a capital promise. All right? A capital promise. And it's, so it's not just a promise, but it's a promise associated with a person. Right? Now watch. Uh, 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 the promise of my father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endowed with power from on high. I want you to know that the promise that he's talking about here is the promise of the Holy Spirit. He's not talking about the promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit, and he's not talking about the promise of speaking in tongues, and he's not talking about the promise of casting out devils. He's not talking about that, but he's talking about the promise of, a, of the person of the Holy Spirit coming into your life. Now, if you don't understand the power of having a person coming into your life, once a person enters into your life, your life is never the same. I have now been married for 12 years, all right? So when my wife, I think 12, yeah, 12 years, when my wife came into my life, my life was never the same. Are you hearing me? I couldn't go out and be the single guy that I used to be. I couldn't go out and do the things that I used to do. And I used, are you hearing, I had to change my mentality, I had to change the way that I think. I had to stop thinking about me only, and I had to think about her. You guys, anybody been married? Remember that? 
when you had to really start thinking about someone else and, and it was and maybe you, you didn't get it at first, but then when you didn't come home and you didn't call and, you know, you were out late and, and dinner was cooking and you didn't, you, you, you guys ever remember that first conversation? Come on, are you hearing me? That, that revelation of, oh, you know, I got to start thinking about somebody else. Oops, sorry. You understand? And, and, and so at that point of bringing someone into your life and you welcoming someone in your life, you change forever. I remember when I first, we had Tristan and, you know, you get this little guy with his little head and you put him in that little donut thing in the car seat and he's this big in a big old car seat and you're thinking, you put him in the back seat and, you, and, and I'm, I remember driving back from the, the, the hospital and the whole time I'm looking back there, I'm going, who are you? Who are you? And this thought hit me right there. This thought, now watch, this is the thought. You're going to be in my life forever. I can't drop you off. Are you hearing me? That you, you're seriously here. And I realized that I had to now start including you in every one of my thoughts and every one of my plans and every one of my strategies for life. Now you're a part of my life and my life is a little bit of me is now going into you. Are you hearing me? So I want you to understand that when God is saying here, I'm sending you the promise, he's not sending a visitation. He's sending someone that's going to stay with you forever. Someone that is not, you can't, you can't make the decisions that you used to make anymore, but you have now someone in your life that every time you make a decision, you have to turn back and say, oh yeah, let me make sure I got it right with you. Is, this, is that sinking? Is that getting? Now, he's, now the promise, now watch. He, the promise, he's, he's referring to the Holy Spirit as the promise. He, the person, not the it. We need to, the Holy Spirit is, he's not an it. And he's not an it that's trying to come and give you goosebumps. He's not the force and the wave. Are you hearing me? He's not this mystical, invisible thing. He is God. And in his all power, might, strength, glory, being God, he wants to invade your life to where you look back and you say, oh, I can't go on making this decision in this job without first consulting you. I realize that I can't make decisions without consulting my wife. In some decisions, I have to really sit down with my boys and my, my little girl as much as she understands, and I have to actually try to get them engaged or else we're going to have a problem in the house. Does anyone understand what I'm trying to say to you? So I want you to understand that if, if we're really going to embrace the promise, we need to understand that the promise was sent to us by, by Jesus, and it wasn't just about them going in the upper room and tearing and wait for the tongues. We, we have mastered the tongues and we have majored on the fact that it was tongues and we have minored on the fact that he is a person that walked into our lives that day of Pentecost and he's been wanting to have an intimate relationship and intimate involvement in our lives and he doesn't want us just to walk around speaking in tongues, casting out devils and doing all this stuff without engaging him. He's the promise. Okay. <laughs>